Hi, I'm Dan. I'm the engineer for Privateer Bikes and for the last three years I've been working on what we're calling our Gen 2 bikes. So going to give you a more full introduction to what we've been doing, how we got here and then a more detailed dive into what we've put into Gen 2 and why we're so stoked with it. The big focus for us coming into Gen 2 was the kinematics of the bike or how the suspension works um, and we generally talk about that in three kind of terms that's leverage rate uh, anti-rise and anti-squat and i'll cover them off in that sort of order so i wanted to achieve three things out of the leverage rate in this bike or we want the suspension to feel a certain way um, enduro trails are typically a lot longer than you would ride in, say, a downhill race. Um, so minimising fatigue is really important in that and maximising grip. Having a very high initial leverage rate makes the suspension very sensitive off the top. It takes very little force to get the back wheel moving in this bike. Um, and that just means that less is transmitted through to the rider, kind of keeping you fresher for longer on trails. Um, and you get great grip really on in the stroke because the wheel's willing to get out of the way of uh, anything that's coming at it. We, the second point in the leverage rate is at sag. We obviously need to support the rider's body weight at sag. Um, and the final point is the bottom out point. Um, so we want to give the rider plenty of oh shit travel. Like in enduro or trail riding, you're not sure what you're coming up to a lot of the time. You're riding as fast as you can. And quite often there's a moment where you've overcooked it, you don't know what's coming up and you go in a bit deep or you go quite hard into something. If the suspension bottoms out, uh, you've turned your bike back into a hardtail. To me, that's a loss of control of the suspension. So we want to give you just a little bit of extra travel all the time to give you the confidence that no matter how fast you go in or how much you're chipping on, you can go that little bit more and the bike's still going to keep composure, keep, keep control and you can push on. So tying those three points up, we did a bunch of sort of work and testing with our riders, figuring out how far we could go. We want to tie, we tied those three points up and we wanted to tie them up in as straight a line as possible. So something we talk about as being linearly progressive. So the leverage rate um, change through the stroke of the bike is as close to a straight line as we can reasonably achieve. That means that there's no feeling of kind of like a pocket or a hole in the middle of the travel. You've got great uh, support. So while these bikes are very progressive, at all points in the stroke, you feel like you can push off the bike and change direction. And it's great for trail riding because you can just pick lines, you can decide where you want to go rather than needing to uh, over-exaggerate body movements to get to the end stroke ramp up or having to run loads of compression damping to provide a platform to push off. So, yeah, that's leverage rate. Um, second one we look at then was anti-rise. So we wanted to just increase the chassis stability in the bike. So as you brake, your weight naturally gets thrown forward. Wanted to, um, we had a, a very low anti-rise number on the Gen 1 bikes, which meant the wheel tracked the ground very well and gave lots of grip, but it didn't quite control that sort of tipping forward feeling that you have. So we wanted to maintain a lot of that grip and that traction so you can brake as hard as you want, but increase the stability of the chassis. And we've done that by increasing the anti-rise. Um, quite important, and I perhaps should have introduced this at the start, but the focus on all of it is kind of consistency in these numbers. So uh, consistency is important because it makes it predictable. You know what's coming, if it's always gonna do, and if the bike's always gonna res respond the same way. I've described this before as um, like if we were in a room and I threw a tennis ball at you and flicked the light off, you have a really good idea of when the tennis ball is going to hit you. Um, if I did the same with like a badminton shuttlecock or a feather, because that slows down at an unpredictable rate, um, if I flick the light off, you're really unsure when that's going to hit you. So having that predictability just means when you're tackling unfamiliar terrain, you can be really confident that you're gonna, uh, the bike's gonna respond in a way that you understand and you can chip on. So the anti-rise that we've provided in the bike, even though, uh, well, as well as being higher, providing greater chassis stability, it 
changes very little through the stroke of the bike. So no matter where you are in the suspension, you get the same braking characteristics, which means it's really easy to learn how to ride these bikes quickly. Um, there's nothing unpredictable that's going on. That predictability is kind of followed through into the way we designed the anti-squat. We were really happy with the anti-squat on the Gen 1 bikes for winching up fire roads. But we found in, it, it was very high, and we found in racing that that stiffened the suspension to the point where you were losing a little bit of traction when pedaling hard uh, off-road, or when seated and riding up technical climbs, it was very stiff and you would bounce off square edges. So we've ever so slightly lowered the anti-squat in the bike, still trying to provide a great balance of grip and pedaling support, but have focused a lot on keeping that anti-squat as consistent as we can through the whole travel of the bike and as consistent as we can in every gear. So no matter what gear you're in, no matter where you are in the travel, you can get on the power and the bike pedals the same. Now it's been uh, one of the sort of really good improvements for us on the Gen 2 bikes is just that consistency in pedaling and the traction that you can get when you're, you're mashing on the pedals. The geometry of the bikes we've kind of antagonised over for, or agonised over I should say, for the Gen 1 bikes and we were really happy with uh, where we were with that. We had a great balance front to rear, the bikes turned into corners really nicely and they gave us the confidence that we'd want on the bike. So if it isn't broke, don't fix it. We didn't really feel a need to deviate from that significantly. So the Gen 2 bikes largely share the geometry of the Gen 1 bike. What we did focus on with geometry was being able to adjust some of that. So we've got a 10 mil adjustment on the chainstay that allows you to lengthen the rear centre. It was something that came from the E161 with that 465 mil chainstay that actually it provides an unreasonable amount of front end grip, allows you to ride a bike quite differently. We still do the size specific chainstays, so every bike has a chainstay that was designed for its front centre length. But yeah, you've got the 10 mil adjustment. And then to make that adjustment as easy as we could, all of the hardware is captive on the bike. You don't need any different kits or extra accessories. Um, it's as simple as take the rear axle out, turn all the hardware around. You need to turn the brake mount around um, and bolt the brake back onto the brake mount and you're good to go. The intention of a lot of this is if it's easy to make the adjustment, you'll try it out and you should try it out. It's what allows our riders to kind of squeak the last little bit out and get their bike to really suit that. Second one we put into that was Fergus Ryan, one of our riders. Really enjoyed riding in Mullet on his Gen 1 bike. So we made him a custom back end for that and he was riding that most of the year. And we realised that riders of different styles on different trails prefer the bigger or the smaller back wheel. So we've got a flip chip um, between the seat stay and the rocker um, that preserves the geometry of the bike. Again, just changing wheel size, we don't necessarily want to change the geometry, but allows you to pick between a 29 or a 27 inch back wheel. 29 gives you a bit better rolling through sort of more chowdery trails and the smaller wheel gives you a bit better clearance and makes the bike a bit more sort of accepting of tipping into corners. Especially for shorter riders like myself, having that small back wheel on steeper trails has been night and day. It's really kind of a, a good bonus for us. That kind of covers the geometry of the bikes. Like I say, we've kept it pretty similar to the Gen 1 bikes, um, but we've added in those two adjustments to allow you to fine tune the bike to suit you and the trails you ride and the way that you like to ride. So um, we still have our uh, external cable routing, kind of no rattle or rub. We're quite keen on external routing, makes bikes very easy to work on, especially if you are privateering at race pits or working out of your garage. We've designed pretty extensive frame protection or chain stay protection on this. And this is something we can dive into a little bit more, but a lot of the feeling that you get through the pedals on your bike comes from the chain flapping about wildly. So we've designed the chain stay to sit very close to the chain line on the bike. And we've designed a chain stay protector that's very soft, um, that sits almost on the chain line of the bike, which really helps to 
sort of quell any of that noise of the chain flapping about and it gives the bike a very lovely muted feel it's been quite a uh, it keeps the bike being very quiet as a ride but also kind of yeah like i say gives a really lovely ride feel where there's less fatigue less things being passed through your feet it allows you to push that a little bit more because it doesn't feel like things are getting too chaotic we've got large bearings in the bikes but we've kind of turned the dial to 11 on these we've got huge main pivot bearings and huge rocker bearings any time you spend working on your bike is time you're not riding it so we don't want to be in the shed we don't want to be fixing bikes so we've got huge bearings of 42 mil outside diameter on the main bearings we've worked with enduro bearings and are using their max series so that's a full complement bearing which means it's got the maximum number of ball bearings in there it's got a proper labyrinth seal on both sides and it's packed full of a high pressure grease as well as that all of the hardware comes with an o-ring on the outside so you've got the seals on the bearings and the bearings are then sealed in by the hardware really just trying to keep the longevity in these bearings large to deal with high loads and incredibly well sealed to last a long time other features we've built into the bike is something that's caught me out before being in the middle of a moors you need to tighten the bike a bolt on your bike and you've only got one multi-tool and you need two to be able to do something up so again thinking about the privateer racer or when you're out on your own riding all of the bolts on the gen 2 bikes or well, you can take the whole thing apart with a single multi-tool um, it just means you're never going to end up stuck yeah something close to my heart as a shorter rider uh, is full seat post insertion in all the frames you can run a 180 mil post on the p1 frames and just means you can get the saddle right out of the way for when things are getting ready. We've got space in all the front triangles for a full size water bottle. Great not having to ride with a pack. And then to follow that up, we've put a tool mount under the top tube on all the bikes. So you never need to ride with something in your pocket. Building on the durability in the bikes, we have removable ISCG tab. It's keyed in a sort of star pattern and held on by the bottom bracket. And it means that if you do absolutely sump out on the bike and knacker your chain guard or your chain ring, you've not written the frame off. An inexpensive part, you can replace that. We really have gone to town on these bikes with features that mean you can own this bike, ride it hard and ride it for a long time without having any issues. So uh, again, unless there's a benefit to it, we won't use any proprietary standards. So we use a ZS4456 headset, really readily available. You can get them anywhere but that also allows you to fit a reach adjust or an angle adjust headset if you wanted. You can get up to five mil reach adjust and a degree and a half of angle adjust. Um, so you can really dial the bike in to what suits you and your riding. And um, we use a BSA 73 mil threaded bottom bracket. Tried and tested, we absolutely love those things. So yeah, bikes keep on trucking. So that's uh, the Gen 2 bikes in a bit more detail. We'll have a full spec breakdown of the 141 and the 161 coming soon. Keep your eyes and ears peeled.